Now we're going to use geometry to find trigonometric functions at special angles between 0 and pi over 2. And you're going to be able to find the values of sine, cosine, and tangent geometrically for pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3, and use the unit circle to be able to explore and find the values of the trigonometric functions beyond their original periods. Let's start with a 30-60-90 triangle that you learned about in geometry. In a 30-60-90 triangle, and again, pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees, pi over 3 is the same as 60 degrees. In this kind of triangle, the shorter leg, the side opposite the 30 degree angle, is always one half the size of the hypotenuse. You found that out in geometry. You also found out that the long leg is the square root of 3 times the short leg. So those relationships really come from trigonometry. You didn't know it back then, but now we're really going to tie it together. So let's put it on the unit circle, this 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we're going to start with the 30 degree angle. So if we put this right triangle on the unit circle with the 30 degree angle at the vertex at the origin, we're going to make the hypotenuse 1. Well, the short side is going to be half of that. The long side is going to be square root of 3 times the short side, which makes it the square root of 3 times a half, or the square root of 3 over 2. And the coordinates of the point on the unit circle for this 30 degree angle are at square root of 3 over 2 for the x coordinate, which makes it the cosine, comma, 1 half, which is the sine, and it's the y coordinate. And because of that relationship to the unit circle, because the hypotenuse is 1, the sine is going to be the y coordinate of 1 half, the cosine is going to be the x coordinate of three, square root of 3 over 2, and the tangent is going to be the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, and that's 1 over the square root of 3, but it's more commonly known uh, by a cleaned up form of the square root of 3 over 3. Moving on to just flipping the triangle around so that the 60 degree angle is at the origin. The same relationships are there, it's just that the square root of 3 over 2 and the 1 half are switched around. So now instead we have an x coordinate of 1 half, and that becomes the cosine of a 60 degree angle. The y coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2, and that becomes the sine of the 60 degree or pi over 3 angle. When you, when you divide the sine by the cosine, you get the tangent, so the square root of 3 over 2 divided by a half, tangent of pi over 3 or 60 degrees, which is the square root of 3. So once again, at 60 degrees or pi over 3, the sine is the square root of 3 over 2, the cosine is 1 half, and the tangent is the square root of 3. Moving on to the other type of special triangle you learned about in geometry, and that's the 45-45-90 triangle. What you learn in a 45, 45, 90, or pi over 4, pi over 4 triangle, the legs are going to be the same because a 45 degree angle creates two legs that are exactly the same. The hypotenuse is always going to be the square root of 2 times whatever the leg is. Now this holds true on the unit circle as well. If we have a 45 degree angle on the unit circle, the two legs have to be the same. If you check this out with a Pythagorean theorem, it's going to work. The only way to make this work with a hypotenuse of 1 is the square root of 2 over 2 being the two legs, which means that both the x and y coordinates in a 45 degree or pi over 4 angle, the x and y coordinates, the sine and the cosine, are the square root of 2 over 2, both of them, which makes sense since both of the legs are the same and they both have the same hypotenuse. The tangent of this angle is 1. Because both legs are the same, they all cancel each other out when you divide one by the other, and you get a tangent of 1. So once again, at pi over 4, or 45 degrees, the sine of that angle is square root of 2 over 2, the cosine is the square root of 2 over 2 also, and the tangent is 1, because both of the legs are equal. Now let's move on to two special quadrantal angles that we need to know. And first of all, it's at zero degrees, and you're probably looking at this red segment here and going, well, that's not a right triangle, so how does this work? Well, if you imagine that it was a triangle of zero degrees, basically what you would have is your leg that's along this line would be the adjacent side, and that would also be the hypotenuse. So the adjacent and hypotenuse are the same, so it kind of makes sense that the cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse would be 1. Since there's no up or down on this angle, it has a sine of 0 because there is no opposite side. So you'd have an opposite of 0 divided by a hypotenuse of 1, and that gives us a sine of 0 for 0 degrees or 0 radians. And finally, the tangent is just the sine divided by the cosine, so 0 divided by 1 is 0, because again, there's no opposite side. That means, because the opposite side is 0 in this really strange looking triangle, 
the tangent is going to be zero. So once again, at zero degrees, very important values to know the sine of zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one because it's all adjacent, and the tangent is zero because we're divided by one. Finally, we're going to look at 90 degree or pi over two quadrantal angle, which occurs when we take this vertical segment here. And so what we've done is we've rotated the angle 90 degrees. And so it has all opposite and no adjacent. So the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be one divided by one, which gives us a value of one. The cosine, well, there is no cosine or it's zero because there is no adjacent side. So we're taking zero and dividing it by the hypotenuse of one and giving us a value of zero. Finally, this one's a strange one. It's a very important one to know. The tangent at this angle of 90 degrees or pi over two is undefined. It's undefined because we're dividing one divided by zero. And whenever we divide by zero, we get an undefined number. So that's an important thing to remember. So if you put it all together, here are the sine, cosine, and tangents of all those angles from zero through pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and pi over two. We're going to look in a minute at patterns that these make, and that's going to lead to our definitions of the sine, cosine, and tangent as functions. And you're probably looking at this and already seeing some patterns. So it's going to be very helpful if you commit all these values in this table to memory.